Hello and welcome to a very special series on the NDTV network. We're calling it Inside Exchange, an initiative to educate you about the various dimensions of the stock market. Now, what exactly happens after you make that first stock trade? How is it settled? What benefits do you derive by trading through an exchange and investing in publicly listed companies? Well, there are multiple questions that you may have about how the world of equity markets functions. And our mission here is to demystify that view. Joining me in this initiative on the very first episode of how the stock exchange works is Mr. Harsh Rungta, who is, of course, an investment advisor and founder of harshrungta.com. Joining us also is Mahantesh Sabarad, head of retail research at SBI Cap Securities. And from our New Delhi studios, joining us is Mr. JN Gupta, former executive director at SEBI, and now also founder and MD of Stakeholders Empowerment Services. Gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us here. Mr. Rungta, I want to begin with you. What exactly happens when I make that first stock purchase? You know, who am I buying the stock from? And what role does a stock exchange play in all of this, in this entire transaction? So stock exchange is actually a market, and it's a very efficient market, where all possible sellers and all possible buyers of a particular uh, listed share or a listed debenture, uh, they will all come to one place, come virtually because it's electronic market. The big advantage when you have all buyers and all sellers at one place is that you get the best possible price, whether you are a buyer or a seller does not matter. Mahantesh, if I can ask you to give me a stepwise breakup of how an investor order is really cleared and settled, what's the whole chain? So, so when an investor places an order, uh, there are various interfaces that he uses, he or her, uh, she uses. Uh, the investor concern can place an order through through an online mechanism. We have various portals available, for example. Or you can place an order by physically visiting an office or calling a dealer. What happens is once an order is taken by the system, either from the investor himself or herself, and from the uh, dealer, uh, the the market settles. That means the the corresponding buyer or seller is found in the market. The trade is closed. A confirmation is given to the investor that your trade has happened. And the next step after that is that the trade needs to be settled. Right. So you go through the process of order, confirmation settlement you know the settlement can happen now and nowadays the settlement happens in what is called as a t plus two that means t is the first day of trade and we'll talk in more detail about that but i just wanted to ask you as a retail investor can i have a direct relationship with a stock exchange or do i do i need an intermediary like a broker you need to have an intermediary like a broker because uh, the what you need to understand here is that the broker essentially assumes the risk of the trade and not the investor. The invest so so any trade that happens on the stock exchange actually is guaranteed by the settlement process by the exchange, but is honored by the broker, both the selling as well as the buying broker. Right. And the client or the investor is actually kept away from any such guarantees, any such risks associated uh, with, with this process. I want to, in fact, pick up on that point that you actually made about risk and get uh, Mr. Gupta in on this. Uh, Mr. Gupta, how does an exchange actually ensure that either of the parties, which is, of course, the buyer and the seller, or the investor and, of course, the broker and the selling party, don't default on a trade? What's the role of the exchange in this? See. In the trade that happens in a stock exchange, it happens between unknown seller and unknown buyer as far as the trading system is concerned. And in every trade, a buyer is replaced by seller, exchange or settlement guarantee that happens through the clearing corporation and seller. So whenever an investor trade, for him, if he is seller, the buyer is the exchange. If he is the buyer, the seller is the exchange. So third party counterparty risks are eliminated. And how the exchange eliminates the risk is there are multiple methods by which the exchange eliminates the risk. One is that they have an exposure limit for each and every broker that the broker cannot trade beyond that. 
then there is a margin system which is applied so that whenever an outstanding of a broker increases because of the volatility in the market, the margin system works and the broker is not allowed to trade further. So the exchange has series of methods by which it ensures that the person, any investor who is trading through the exchange system is guaranteed that whatever he has bought, he will be delivered that or whatever he has been sold, he will give in the money for that. So, Rungta, you know, let's elaborate a little bit more on this whole idea of margining. You know, why is it an important mechanism to ensure fairness in the market? And briefly explain to us, you know, what exactly it means. So, if I was to take a common example, if I make a promise to pay you 100 rupees two days from now, what is to ensure that I will actually deliver on my promise? Right? So, I think I put up Say whatever is the margin, say I put up 20 rupees as, as my uh, security, that here is 20 rupees, so even if this promise is worth 90 rupees, okay, the 10 rupees loss can be taken out from the margin. So I think margin plays an extremely important role in ensuring that promises for future performances are kept. Right. So the whole idea is whether the promise is being made by the buyer or the seller, by the brokers in the system, whosoever is making a promise about a future performance that's backed by money of a certain value uh, as a percentage of whatever is the uh, risk amount that is there. You spoke about something called T2. Now that's of course is a trade settlement process because often you don't get your shares deposited in your account on the same day as you buy them. Why does that happen? And can India really you know, move to what we may perhaps call the T1 settlement process where the transaction becomes quicker? So uh, let me first explain what is this T2. It is actually T plus two, which means yeah. in layman terms, T refers to the day you trade. Right. And two refers to the two days later, that means the second day, uh, third day actually after the trade when the settlement happens. Right. Uh, in India, we have been following this T plus two concept uh, since 2003, if I'm right. So almost uh, 14, 15 years that we have been following this system. And why we follow the T plus two system is that uh, in, the, uh, in the stock exchanges, wherever the buying and selling happens, the confirmation of the orders in, in the earlier systems used to not happen instantaneously. It used to be ha happening at the end of the day where you reconcile after the trading is over, your, the markets are closed, the brokers concerned reconcile the trades and come with a confirmation process and then they will realize, or the broker sometimes realize that they placed an order which the investor never asked for. That means they bought more shares than the investor wanted. Or, or there could be a situation which is they sold more shares than what the investor ordered. So there has to be a mechanism by which these uh, reconciliations happen. These typically happen in the, the day after the trade. And then you go through a process of where, uh, where there is a possible default. So you allow for a day where there is a possible default because you will not be able to deliver the entire money for the shares that you purchased because you ordered more than what you wanted or right. vice versa. But answering your question, can we move to T plus one kind of settlement? Of course we can uh, because technology today enables us to do that. Right. And we in fact have a special episode dedicated to technology when we talk more about that in a couple of weeks. But I want to get you in, uh, Mr. Gupta. I want to talk a little bit more about brokers, who, of course, are a very important link between the exchange and the investor. How do I pick the right broker? You know, there's a proliferation of them in the market. How do I ensure that my broker is not actually some, you know, fly-by-night operator and that he is a legitimate entity? The first thing is that he has to be a savvy registered broker. Otherwise, he cannot operate. And then you have to see, see a sleeping investor can never be guaranteed protection. So you have to be aware that if you have bought a share, if it at plus T plus two, it is not there in your account, then you should find out why it is not there. Nowadays, if you compare 
from last 20, 30 years, the system has become so good that the chances of cheating is very rare because once you trade, immediately a confirmation comes from the depository or the exchange that this is the amount that has been traded in your account. So there have been systems, checks and balances. Mahantesh, before we take a break, uh, you know, I want to understand what are the kind of products that are offered on a stock exchange? Because we often talk about equities, but there's a lot more that you can buy from an exchange, right? So give us a snapshot of that very quickly. So uh, you buy equities, that's the single biggest uh, uh, thing that you can buy on the stock exchange. There are equity linked other products that you can buy and sell on the stock uh, exchanges. So there are derivatives that are available, futures and options. These are equity linked futures and options. You can buy and sell mutual fund units on the stock exchanges. You can buy and sell ETF products, exchange traded fund products on the stock exchanges. You can even buy currencies, buy and sell currencies. And these are of course uh, not physical currencies, but these are trading in currencies. Uh, so all these products are in a way available on the stock exchanges for you to trade including some debt products. That means you can even buy and sell certain debt instruments on the right. stock exchanges. Now that you've understood how the stock exchange works and protects your interests and the products that you can buy, we'll shift focus to your rights and obligations as an investor. But that's after a short break. Stay tuned.